Hello guys, today I will be showing you how to use the AVI Synth HTML resizer created by Brandonator, so let's go ahead and get into it. So first of all, you need to make sure that everything is set up correctly. So you want to unzip the plugins folder and go ahead and go to um, your C drive. You're going to go to your program files, find AVI Synth, and find the plugins folder. And then you want to go ahead and copy everything into that folder. But I'm going to cancel because I've already done it. But you would follow through with that. And then you want to go to your C drive. You want to unzip the video folder. Copy the video folder into your C drive. Okay. But again, I'm going to cancel because I've done it already. So here's the video folder. You're going to spend a lot of time in here, so get familiar with what's in here. Anything marked in red, you're probably not going to use, uh, so you don't have to worry about them. But I'll go ahead and explain the other ones. So normal.bat, it creates a full-size 17 second video. And full-size means that you're, it's not going to be cropped. So you're going to have to crop in Photoshop. And then normal webm is kind of the same. You drag your TS files into it, but in this case, it creates a cropped video because you're using the HTML resizer. And again, the same duration is 17 seconds. Normal webm range is where you drag in your TS files again. It creates a cropped video because you're using the HTML resizer. And it's also trimmed, meaning that you set the start of the video and you can set the end instead of only setting the start and then it creates a 17 second video. Here you can say, oh, I want it to start here and I want it to end here and create a, say, three second video and it just takes a lot less time than sitting for a 17 second video to render. Okay, so the reencode.bat is what you can use after editing your AVS script. So say you make a mistake on your AVS script, you can just quickly edit it and then double click on the reencode.bat and um, it outputs your AVI file where you can just input it into Photoshop and make your GIF. The x264 lossless.bat, you can drag any video into it. It creates a full size 17 second video, which means that you're not going to crop in the HTML resizer. And by any video file, I mean you can use AVI, you can use FLV, MP4, MOV, you can use anything practically. And you mainly want to use this if the other bats do not work. So say, um, so say that you input your video into um, oh, normal WebM and it doesn't work, it gives you an error, you go ahead and just use this and it should work most of the time. So X264 lossless WebM is kind of the same. You can drag any video and it creates a cropped video because it's using the HTML resizer. And again, you can just use this if the other ones do not work. So I'm going to use normal WebM range today, so I'm going to go ahead and find my video and I'm going to use the MAMA Awards Spring Day video. And I'm just going to drag it into the video folder and then I'm going to go ahead and drag it into the WebM range. So here's the command prompt that you'll be working in. Here you just enter the starting time. And then you set the ending time. So instead of creating a 17 second video from 11 minutes 4 seconds, it creates a range from 11 minutes 4 seconds to 11 minutes 6 seconds, if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. Okay, so now you just wait. And if your computer's faster, you won't have to sit here for a while, like me. But you just wait, and I'm leaving it in real time so you can see how long about it would take. Okay, so now it's going to open the resizer, 
And here's where you go ahead and get all your cropping information. So you can change the gift size to 268, 177, 540, any tumbler size or whatever you're going to use it for. And you can set the height to anything. Today I'm using 540 by 500. So here you just drag to crop it. In the opacity slider, it just helps you visualize what the outcome GIF is going to look like. So now you're just going to drag around your video, make sure that it's cropped well. And you don't have to crop if you don't want to, just make sure that you don't copy the cropping function if you do not want it. So you can choose um, your preprocessor. So the first one is none, and you want to use this if you use the X264 bat so that you can um, not go ahead and go through the pains of deinterlacing because it's already a progressive video. And if you want to know more about that, message me and I'll, I'll help you out. Or you can Google it. You're probably not going to use IVTC, and you're probably not going to use 1 in 5 dupe either, so don't have to worry about those. QTGMC 30 Fast, basically it's a deinterlacer, and it keeps the original video's frame rate intact. So if it's 25 frames per second, it's going to keep it at that, and it it's fast, so it's going to be a little less quality than the slow one, but it's going to be faster, as the name suggests. And then slow, it's the same thing. The frame rate is intact, and it's going to be run slower, but have better quality. And then QTGM C60 fast is going to double your frame rate, creating a smoother GIF, but... In turn, with smoother GIFs, you're going to have to sacrifice the amount of frames that you're going to have in your GIF. So, I would recommend using it if you're making any GIF that's 268 width and below, because those GIF sizes, they can use more frames than a GIF that's 540 and still be under 3 megabytes. QTGMC 60 slow, it's the same thing, but it runs slower, but it produces better quality. So I'm going to choose QTGMC 30 slow, and then you want to choose your resizer. We have Resample HQ, D by Linear, Dither Tools. I personally just like to use D by Linear because it produces a sharper output. The other ones are fine. They resize fine, but D by Linear adds a little bit of sharpness to it. So I'll choose that. And then I'm going to add extra sharpening. So after you have all your settings, you've resized it how you want it, you want to copy this text. And again, if you do not want to crop it, do not copy the crop at the bottom. Okay. So you want to close out of the resizer and wait for AVSP mod to open if it did not already. Sometimes it will open before. So then we have this complement parity. If you are using QTGMC 60, you want to remove the hashtag from the front of it so that your video is not jerky. But since I'm using QTGMC 30, I'm not going to have to worry about that. So I'm just going to paste it on line 17. That's where I usually paste it. And then you want to add a hashtag in front of QTGMC because if you don't, your computer will run slow and you will cry because everything freezes on you and you think that you're going to lose everything. So go ahead and make sure that you include that hashtag. So here is the video and you just go ahead and scrub through to find where you want the video to start, where you want it to end because you do not want to run QTGMC on 108 frames. It's not realistic. So you want to find the start and you want to go to trim and you want to set the start point 
And then you want to set the end point by pressing the end key on your keyboard or pressing the little end thing. So then here are my settings. Just follow them and then choose a place to paste and hit apply. So after that you want to go ahead and remove the hashtag and you want to save your video, your file and make sure you don't click on the video otherwise again your computer will run very slow and it will freeze. So now it's going to go ahead and encode your script. It uses virtual dub to do this and I usually leave this minimized and I just hover over it to see how far along we are and as you can see we are 10 percent of the way along or you can go to view and then go to show status window and you can see the time elapsed you can see the total time that it's going to take you can see the current video frame that it's processing but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and skip over how long it took. And it took around two minutes. And then you want to go to your temp folder. You want to go ahead and click on your video.avi. And you want to rename it because if you do not, if you run the whole process again, the whole resize your process again, you will lose the, the video. So rename it to something that you'll remember and then and put it into Photoshop, but I'm not going to do that because I was just making one this time. I'm going to input it into Photoshop and you can see that I already have my coloring. I'm going to just drag and drop my coloring and show you guys the end result. I'm going to open it in Google Chrome and here's the final product. It's going to be in my gallery so you can download it, edit it anything you guys want and I just want to say have fun gift making don't get discouraged ask me any questions and I'll help you and yeah